What is the one thing that when it comes up, you go, ah, in MMOs? And not only MMOs, but online games for literally decades now. But what if that could change? Talk about farming. There's something that's constantly been impressing me with Squeenix's model. And this isn't just an FF14 gush, because the system I'm going to explain does have some flaws. But it's such a step in the right direction. It doesn't matter what game it is, whether it be your Call of Duties, your Apex Legends, your MMOs, your any online game has this fear and base model when they design every single system. And that is, how do we keep the players online all the time? Because if they they have this complete fear that if you're not playing their game, you're not spending money with them and you're playing something else and you're spending money with those guys, right? That's it. So it comes down to when we're talking about farming, you've seen every system under the book at this point. You've seen prestige levels, honor levels, reputation levels, and they're usually in some way gated or they're made really, really long to keep you grinding the same thing over and over. But there's two elements of it. One is the way you, uh, what the reward is and how you get it. So those will be the levels. And then there's two is the gameplay involved with actually doing it. And typically, this falls into the category of just playing the same thing over and over and over and over again, regardless of how fun that system might actually be. And it doesn't matter because as long as you're playing it, you're doing it all the time. You're playing their game. That's it. So you, even if you come down to like, and I know I've done this, something like the Burning Crusade Classic, which many people will be playing right now, and you're after that spell strike gear, you might be farming fire elementals for hours and hours and hours. And I spent like 12 to 14 hours grinding out moats of fire. And then I had to go and do the same with some other moats in order to eventually build this one set of gear. And you will say, I felt really accomplished when I did it. But for me, at least, and I think more and more people fall into this category every single day is that you need to turn your brain off from it because what you're actually physically doing is really boring. You're just grinding. You're waiting for mobs to spawn. You're killing them. They're not too difficult. Then you're waiting for the next one, killing it, not too difficult. And this is where we turn to YouTube, we turn to Twitch, we turn to Netflix, we turn to whatever it might be to try and distract our brain from the fact that what we're doing is an incredibly monotonous process. And the same exists across tons of other games where you're just like, right, I need to... Recently, a good example would be my kids got into Plants vs. Zombies. And I thought, that's cool. They could do some shooting with some peas and pods and things like that. But then they started to discover, like, the hidden characters. They started to learn about the goals that were in the game. And what did they turn into? Really endless grinds, where they had to wait for certain events to happen. And then they had to grind out, like, 50 PvP matches in order to earn an X amount of crystals. And those crystals can then open a chest, which then leads you into something else, where you can then get one chest reward. Then you need to wait for the event to come back, and it can take months. And it's all a case of keeping you online all the time. That's their purpose, because if you're not playing their game, you're doing something else. Well, Squeenix obviously doesn't have that approach. We've talked about it many times now, and it's such a freeing experience because it allows their creative floodgates to open. Because when you don't start designing something with the goal of how do we keep players online all the time, when you drop that out of it, when you have the freedom to say, we're kind of okay if players don't engage with this. It's the same thing we talked about with our Bosnia content. And we just make it fun. People will play it if they enjoy it, and if they don't enjoy it, they're not going to play it, and that's okay. They'll play something else, but we'll have the confidence that they'll come back for what they do enjoy when we update that, and we update the game very regularly. And so that whatever they enjoy will likely come back later, and they'll resubscribe then, they'll come back for a month or two, or they'll leave, and then they'll come back again. And we're happy with that model, because that's worked out for us so far, and as we can see, it's a slow burn that has risen FF14 to the levels it's at now. Now, I encountered one of these systems. It's not a new system. I want to be totally clear on that. I want to be, I want to be so f fundamentally clear this system is not new and it's not perfect, but Jesus Christ is a step in the right direction. And I want to talk about treasure maps. So I didn't know these existed. I have now played Final Fantasy for about 800 hours. I had no idea this system existed. I have now completed the MSQ. I finished Endwalker. Don't worry, our videos are coming on that. I've, I've been in Germany for three weeks working 16 hour days. So <laughs> bear, bear with me as we get back into the swing. What are the treasure maps? So I know for a lot of our FF14 viewers, you'll know what these are. But I also saw a lot of people in the chat. And this is what happens when you're not forced. And this content is not mandatory. Who, one, didn't know about it. Two, thought it was probably useless. And three, did know about it, but didn't understand that the rewards were actually really good. So what is it? It's to do with professions. 
So when I say professions to you, certainly as MMO gamers and our WoW audience, what do you think of in terms of getting difficult and hard supplies, right? When you need those raw materials that are really tough. Well, the first thing you got to think of is, oh, I probably need to farm something like Anixia to get Anixia scales to make Anixia hide cloaks. I need to farm elementals and elemental plateau. I need to grind out a reputation over a series of time because it's probably time gated or something along those lines in order to access a vendor who can then sell things. Or perhaps there's a random vendor that suddenly appears if I wear a magical cloak in the case of Najatar. Or I need to do some sort of raid boss like Thok the Bloodthirsty in order to get something from that so I can then bring it in. But some sort of long, long grind, right? And it'll be the same for those of you who PvP and uh, FPS games. It's like, okay, well, I need to get prestige level 30. Then I will get some sort of gun upgrade or I need to frag somebody with like 50 grenades and then I'll get some sort of grenade upgrade or something along those lines where you're just like, okay, I'm presented with this thing and I can almost mathematically calculate when I'll get it. And that's that's the grind. I can turn my brain off. I can go at it. I'm just going to go into this game, sometimes even to the point of scuffing your own gameplay because you're going to use a weapon or a tool or a utility that you don't particularly enjoy, but you really want that unlock. So you're going to play your character as you don't want to play it in order to find out about these things. So now I've finished the MSQ and I agree with Jesse Cox on this is that FF14 is really an RPG MMO because essentially I've played 800 hours of single player MMO. And now that's done, I'm starting to do what I always do, which is, okay, where's the MMO stuff? Where's the stuff that they've put in the game that I don't even know about that's not story related, that's the MMO stuff. And I'm now dipping into professions and I'm dipping into all these kind of things. And along that journey, I encountered treasure maps. So the system is pretty simple. When you're doing various activities, you can get a treasure map in a bottle. Now, I instantly had my heart sink thinking, this is probably something like Azerite Islands in ba Battle for Azeroth. But then you remember games like Sea of Thieves, where the treasure map is really fun. It's like, okay, you got to get that out of your head. Let's give this a try, because that's what I'm here to do, is to find out about all these integral systems to the game. And I found something so cool. And all you do is you have this treasure map. You can decipher it, and it'll give you exactly what you would expect, which is a little picture with an X marks the spot somewhere in the world and it will tell you what zone it's in which is great so you click on that zone map you browse the map and you're like okay it's there and there are in set locations although there's lots and lots of them so after you've done a few you instantly recognize where this place would be and then you fly down there and you do dig so very similar to wow's archaeology system where you go down and you dig but unlike that system there's no like you need to stand on the exact correct point as long as you're in the right area it'll just reveal the treasure box then you get a treasure box you click it, some mobs spawn, you kill them, and then you get a reward from the treasure box, which will be profession related. Now, everything I'm about to tell you has nothing to do with professions. This is the first thing that I thought, genius. And I mean, genius. Does this system have to specifically relate to the reward that comes from it? And the answer is, no, it doesn't. What it has to be is fun. It has to be fun first, and then we can reward whatever, because it won't matter. The players were having fun. So, so far, I've not described something super fun to you, but wait. Then there's, and I would guess it's about 60 to 70% chance that a portal will spawn. And there are ways of gaining treasure maps which guarantee portal spawns every single time. This is when it got interesting, because what did I find? An entire, separated off from everything else, raid zone. And I'm not talking about some small corridor with some enemies tossed in there. I'm talking about fully fleshed out, theatrical, circus-like environment. I'm going to be focused on the Endwalker iteration of this because that's the latest one. But there are variations of this I will talk about. And I found this entire raid zone. And we got a raid team together. So our eight-man team is now doing this content. Friends are now working together to do something for an afternoon. Instantly, so much better. Why? Because what you're doing there is so good. So good. Come on, Paul! Oh, we not killed it. Come on, baby. Come on. A portal has appeared. We ride. You presented with a room. And in that room, there's another treasure chest. You get bonus rewards. So not only have you already gotten your base reward from just clicking the chest outside the world, now you're in the portal, you get a bonus reward. Clicking on this chest will then spawn... Maybe a boss. Maybe it'll spawn a whole bunch of enemies. Nothing super difficult. Nothing that you can't clear in, say, 20 seconds or something like that. So nothing big, but something interesting to do. And then they start putting twists on it. 
that keep you engaged. This can be a series of mobs spawning that have numbers over their head. So if you kill them in the right order, you'll get yet more rewards. Or it'll be a treasure goblin that will appear and you have to kill that before it escapes and it's in the, the mix of all the AoE that you're doing. This can happen during boss fights as well. So you're dealing with boss mechanics and suddenly there's an extra enemy and you have to ignore the boss. Because if you kill the boss first, the enemy escapes. If you kill the boss first, the enemies don't count. So now you're fully engaged. Like, oh, we've got to do this. And it changes up the gameplay in what is just a basic, simple battle arena with a bunch of enemies in it. And then it mixes it up. So you're engaged. Okay. Then you clear those enemies. You get the big reward out of the chest. And then a couple of things can happen. They put more twists on it. One of the things that can happen is you all get to play a game of higher or lower. You're presented with two playing cards. It can go between one and nine. And you'll be sold. Okay, your first card is two. Higher. Next card is seven. Lower. Next card is three. Higher. Next card is eight. <laughs> and then you can get five and you're like, oh God. What does this do? Essentially doubles the rewards from the treasure chest every single time. Up to five times. So these rewards can massively outstrip what you should ordinarily get. And you're fun because you're then engaged with your players. Like, should we go higher or lower? I don't know. But you also have the chance tends to drop out. So if you get a five and you're like, uh, it could be higher or lower, we're right smack in the middle. It's a real 50-50 guess. Maybe we just take our rewards and call it good. Maybe we risk it all to get a bunch of extra rewards. Maybe we don't. And then you, you have this really fun, engaging experience where your brain is engaged. You're not looking away at the screen. You're now focused on a very simple game that actually really benefits you. Because not only are you being rewarded with profession rewards, which is what you would want. So your rare, rare linens, your rare logs, whatever it might be. You are now being offered the chance of just playing a game. And this is what I adored about this. You're just playing a game with your friends. You're having fun. And you're making decisions. You're thinking about it. You're trying to risk it and do all these kind of things. It's just a game of higher or lower. It's nothing complicated. But if you do it right, you get showered in rewards. And these rewards include not just profession mats, but tons and tons of gill, which is the money in the game. But also, as always, similar to what I said in Bosnia, you're passively acquiring the uh, currency to furnish all your alts or even your main characters if you want to in raid level gear. So you're just passively gearing up other characters at the same time. That's just a something you don't even think about. And then I ultimately, I played for one afternoon. I ended up capping them. So I got like a, an almost full set of gear for my alt character that I've not leveled up to that level yet. Like similar to what I did in Bosnia is I have all this gear waiting for me. Then when that's done, you're then presented with more options. Right or left. Simple, simple. And I love how simple they keep it because when you're with a bunch of gamers, simple works super well. Do we go right or do we go left? And then they put more twists on that as well in that you can choose right or left, you go to it and the door has many different animations that can play out. It could just open for you and then you proceed to the next area where you can continue on. Ultimately, there's a set of five which results in a mega boss and I'll get there to a second. Or it'll half close, look like it's going to close you out and then let you through. Or it will fully close and then pop a red alert sign so you're all getting kicked out of the instance. And then it can be rescued at the last second so the screen will actually fade out before it comes back. So you're like, oh my god, we got kicked out. I can't believe it on door number one or whatever. <laughs> and you, you, you get to go through. And the same can happen at like the final door and you're sat there and you're like, oh my god, if we get the final door. And this is rare to have happen. I think the six hours I did this, we only got to the last boss one time. Not that we were consistently showered with rewards up to that point. thing is when you get to the last boss and you have that door open is you then get a nice big boss not super difficult again not intended to be this is for fun it's just giving you rewards then you get the mega chest at the end which has a hundred thousand gil in it not huge to long-term players but still a decent amount of change then you can get to gamba again and you can get up to half a million gil each if you play this out correctly and you have that huge like tension of risk reward and at no point have i mentioned throughout this did I get my profession drop? That just happens naturally as you're playing. 
It just naturally happens in the background of you enjoying the game. This is farming in a new way because for a long time, the game uh, game devs, as I've seen through the ridiculous MMOs I've been playing, I've been playing Destiny this week, we've been playing EVE Online, all these kind of things. I've been trying to reinvent the wheel of how do we change farming for the modern audience because, yeah, sure, two decades ago, grinding out enemies was pretty normal. I did it. Most of you have done it. Most of you probably still do it today. But a more modern audience with so many gaming options available to them will we'll be turning their nose up at the idea of, like, I just have to farm. And you look at games like New World, where as soon as I started clicking those uh, st uh, stones and trees and just watching a cast bar fill up, I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. And I kind of feel like I need to dedicate an afternoon to just clicking trees and sticking a movie on, is how I felt about it. It's like, okay, if I need to level this up, I'm just going to have to sit here and click trees and watch YouTube, watch Twitch, watch whatever, uh, in order to get through this. But I need to do it because I want to level this up. Which is what a lot of the devs are hoping you'll do. They're like, yeah, you're still playing though, right? Still playing. So just click those trees and keep playing it done. And it was one of the things that immediately turned me away. I was like, ah, I don't do this anymore. Because I can go and play something else where I could just be, I can have gameplay. And that's what I'm looking for in my games. That's why I love the, the Soul series and all those. Is I, I love gameplay. I want to be playing the game. Clicking on a tree, <laughs> not really the gameplay I'm looking for, man. That's not the thing I'm looking for. Now, I said it wasn't perfect. It's not perfect because, of course, you can be RNG'd out. And if you are looking for a specific drop, there's some randomness to it, whether you get through the doors or not. But that is so alleviated by the fact that, one, I'm not doing anything boring. And I'm having fun. I'm constantly looking at the screen. Right? Look, think of the things I mentioned. We're clicking the chest. There's mobs spawning. Okay. I'm looking at that. My attention is starting to drift away. Then it's like, oh, we've got the ordered mobs to kill. Okay. So I'm back in the game again. Oh, we've got the, oh, the treasure goblins here. I need to do that. And the music changes to let you know that there's something else going on. Then we have to pick the door. Okay, right or left. And then the, the, the higher or lower spawn. It's like, okay, I'm invested here. All the time, I'm being drawn back into having fun and engaging. That's what I loved about this system. It had nothing to do with like, oh, you're after, say, a certain rare piece of hide, a certain piece of leather, a certain piece of uh, iron ingots or something. So let's go and farm 50 iron deposits to see whether that thing drops. This has nothing to do with that. And this is such a good idea for in letting people just have fun first, rewards later. And this is how a lot of great businesses have started. I don't know if you know this, and this is a bit like out there, but <laughs> Spotify, for example, if you learn the history of Spotify, they were like, we don't care how we monetize this yet. What we're going to do is make it cool. We want to make it awesome. We, let's make this system cool. We'll find out how we make money on it later on. Because the reverse happens in a lot of online gaming system, which is like, right, how do we make money off this? Well, we keep people engaged. So that pr promotes microtransactions. It makes our monthly active users look better. And again, this isn't just a wow thing. This is like ev nearly every game. And FF14 still has this. I've just dipped my foot into professions overall. And I just started doing botany, which is like, okay, you go and click trees. They've made it a bit better by providing you spells and combos. And I haven't finished it out yet. So I want to see where it goes. Ultimately, you're riding around and you're clicking on trees. And you're on bushes and you're collecting rewards from them. Now, you do get to choose your rewards, which is moi. Uh, but it's still there in some way. But looking at this treasure map system is so good. The other flaw is, if people don't engage with it, they don't know it's there. If you're not making it happen, a lot of people don't know it's there. And I saw that from my audience. I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. I've never done this before. <laughs> this is actually pretty awesome. And then you have the problem of people looking for specific drops will get annoyed with the randomness a little bit. Even though they're getting showered with the rewards, they may not want those. They may be like, okay, I get a ton of gold. I get a load of tombstones or whatever to get all this gear. But what I'm really after is that one thing. And there are other ways of getting those things. But here's a side activity that you could do with your friends that is super fun. Not only that, it gets better. It does. <laughs> this place system has been in place since Heaven's Ward, which is their second expansion. And all of them have different ones. Different battle arenas, different styles of playing. So there's roulette. They've really gone with the gambling style. And I think that's really cool, especially when you have some influence or even if you feel like you have some influence over it, like you do with left or right, is you make that choice. The roulette one is automated, but it's still fun to see where the thing's going to land to so whether you spawn a giant raid boss, a weak boss, get kicked out, get rescued. I had a ridiculous situation. That I've, the most bizarre RNG I've ever had in any video game is in the roulette one. We failed three times in a row and got rescued. And I've never seen anything like that. Is you got, we got pulled out by a primal god who rescued us to allow us to play on and gave us a huge boss in return. 
So although we failed, we actually got this. Now, of course, in the background, it's like, well, you didn't really fail. The, the custom was designed to show you that you won, but you still get that response. Like, oh my God, we got kicked out on the second go. Rescued? We're back in the game. Oh God, we failed again. Rescued? We're back in. What is going on? And having that visceral emotional reaction to farming. And let's remember that what we're doing here. We're farming profession mats. I've never had that in my life. I've never had that in my life. Come on, one more. We've lost the last two rounds. You can't make us lose three in a row. And it's such a good step in the right direction. It's such a step in the right direction. And another piece of the puzzle or why when you design systems without thinking, how do we just keep the player online all the time? It frees you up to just get wild and get wacky with it. And I really hope this is something that other game devs take into account because I want to do them a lot more. Whereas when I'm farming, I'm just like, at least for me, and you guys probably feel the same in most cases, it's just like, oh my God. I've got to go. I can't play right now. I've got to go and farm elementals. I've had that conversation. I've got to go and do fishing. I've got to go. I need. I need potions. I need flasks. I need food. I have to go and farm chimeras or whatever it might be. I, so I can't PvP with you right now. I can't do some dungeons with you right now. I have to go and stand and do fishing. And I need. It's not a case of I even want to do it. I need to do it in order to do the gameplay later. And that's where the big difference came from me. So I really wanted to just talk about the system is how impressed I have and how how much I feel this is in such a step in the right direction is to one, okay, it's profession related. Does the system involved in farming it need to be profession related? No. Okay. Do we need people to feel like they have to do this? No. Um, so what should we do with it? Let's just have weird and wacky fun with it and create something that a group of eight people can be like, oh, hey, do you want to go and do this? Whereas... Even how many activities do you like do you actually do large scale with your friends in mmos or anything right now not many it's usually raiding m plus or dungeons or some do you want to level together this gave you another route is like hey do you want to go farm some a load of money and a load of alt gear and get some really expensive crafting materials that we can sell or we can use or whatever yeah that sounds awesome while well, having a fun system that's such a huge departure from what i'm used to that i adored it so much so there it is, dudes. <laughs> you guys have probably also noticed, I should point them out, uh, these displays behind me. These are our designs. Yeah, these are designed by Chris here in the office while I was in Germany. Uh, this one, uh, Chris will probably put a better picture here, let's say here, uh, of our Emmett Selk Armorot one. Um, best selling display on display. It's amazing. So go check those out as well because we've got like 29% discount code below. They're awesome. They're so good. I'll see you again, dudes. Bye-bye.